All right, the Twitter rate limit. Okay, so I've been showing you with the Twitter spitter how I can load the XML and load images um, and do all this stuff with the Twitter API. Well, the thing is that Twitter puts a limit on how many times you can access its server for this type of information. Um, and you can only access this stuff 150 times per hour. Now, for the normal small time guy like me, you know, that's not a big deal. You know, I get, you know, <clears throat> maybe 300 people visiting my site a day. I don't have 150 people banging on this thing uh, per hour. Um, but if you were to build an application like this for real world use, um, you would have to be pretty careful with this rate limit. Um, and to show you what it looks like, let's go over, or how I figure out how it works. I'm gonna go to a different window here. Um, and you'll see here that off of snorkel.tv dev, I'm going to the tw Twitter, um, PHP file and I'm requesting this rate limit status XML okay and when I load that up look what happens let's do an inspect element and you will see here that it's telling me that I have 11 remaining hits okay out of the hourly limit of 150 now this is pretty cool because um, this is actually going to be able to explain the problem I was having um, what I was seeing was that as time went by, even if I wasn't using my app, this remaining hits was dropping like crazy when I wasn't doing anything. And it had me literally pulling my hair out. Um, if I request that same page through, do you have a pen? Oh, let's not do source. Let's do this. Um, you'll see the data that I get. If I do inspect elements, it just makes it more readable. Here I have 142 hits remaining for this hour, okay? Um, and what I was seeing was that when I was requesting Twitter stuff from Do You Have a Pen, um, my, my rate limit was hardly going down at all. But on snorkel.tv, it was going down like crazy. And the last time we looked at that, there were, what, 11 hits left? Let's go back to uh, snorkel.tv again. And here we have 11 hits. Let's refresh this XML, and you'll see we're down to eight already. And what's gonna happen is, as soon as I request some XML from Twitter, it's going to check to see if I'm allowed to make requests. And if I'm not allowed to make requests, it's gonna tell me that my rate limit has been exceeded. And my Flash movie is actually set up to deal with this problem. Um, so let's just leave that here at eight. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about why was this number going down so much? I was Googling like crazy and I really couldn't find the answer for a few days. And what I found out was that my host, HostGator, um, since I have one of their basic baby plans, as they're called, um, their service is great, by the way. I never have any problems. Um, but what was happening is that my domain, snorkel.tv, is on a server with many other domains sharing the same IP address. So if other people were running Twitter apps, what was happening is every time they hit Twitter, it was counting against my own rate limit. And this had me pulling out my hair for a while. So that's why I had to go ahead and put my Swift, my Twitter spitter Swift on doyouhaveapen.com because nobody else is sharing the IP that I have over there. Um, I could pay an extra two bucks a month and have a dedicated IP on snorkel.tv. Um, but this rate limit is very serious if you are building an app in real life um, for a client. You know, if they have thousands and thousands of daily users, um, that rate limit's going to get taxed really quickly. So you'd have to investigate how you could cache possibly the XML files that you're loading so you don't have to go to the Twitter server all the time. And now that I've rambled quite a bit, let's refresh this, and you'll see now that I have four remaining hits. I haven't been doing anything, right? But somebody else on the same IP as snorkel.tv has been. And so to get around the fact that snorkel.tv's IP was, was hammering the, the heck out of Twitter, um, let's go back to my little um, servers diagram and let me show you exactly what's happening now. All right, so when my site loads in the Twitter spitter, it's getting its HTML page from snorkel.tv. All right, that's my blog that you're actually seeing right there. But then that HTML page is pulling my Swift off of do you have a pen.com. And then that Swift from do you have a pen.com is going to the PHP proxy file to then make a request of Twitter of the XML. Twitter then spits back the XML, the PHP file feeds it back into the Swift, and then everything shows up over here. When I go to load images, this Swift is allowed to load images directly off of the Twitter 
image servers. Um, and the reason for that is this, is that the server that hosts all of the images for Twitter has a cross-domain policy file that allows all servers to um, interact with it. And in fact, I can prove that to you. Let's go back to Flash and let's go to my Twitter spitter and let's just pump this thing out real quick. Come on, all right, it's gonna load in some XML and let's just load in some images and you'll see that the images that load in come from this a2.twing server. All right, so Twitter image server or something. There's a1, a2, a0. So let's just go to this server right here and uh, we'll load in that JPEG. All right, just to show you how this works. Let's go back to Google Chrome. We'll do a new tab. And there we go, so there's the dude's image. But if I go to that server and load in crossdomain.xml, watch this. Let's inspect element and we'll open it up and you'll see that on this a2.tmg allow access from domain equals asterisk. That means allow all domains to load these images. So Flash will not get security errors when it's trying to load those images. So again, this is how it works. Snorkel.tv is giving you the full experience, but it's loading the SWIFT off of do you have a pen. That SWIFT is then making its data request to the PHP proxy file, which is then going to Twitter and then back to Flash. Once the XML loads, we're then grabbing all the images off of this box back into the SWIFT and everything shows up on the pretty computer here. So that's the whole kit and caboodle right there, folks. We load the XML first, and in order to do that, we need to use the PHP proxy file because Twitter does not have a cross-domain policy file allowing our Swift access. So we fold the Swift into thinking it's getting its data from the Swift hosting site by going to the PHP proxy file, which makes the requests for us and passes everything back. Once the Swift gets the XML, it loads in all the images and everything works fine until you hit that rate limit. So let's go back to um, this guy right here, and let's go to window right here, sorry. And now, while I've been blabbing, let's go to the Snorkel TV rate limit status. Let's refresh this. Last time we checked, we had four remaining hits. Look what happens now. It says, womp womp, remaining hits zero. So that means that if I were trying to now use my Twitter spitter to load in some XML, it wouldn't happen because my rate limit has been exceeded. And let's just refresh this a few more times and it's not going to be reset until the top of the hour. So my Flash app needs to know whether or not my rate limit has been exceeded. Okay, now look what happens here. If I go to snorkeltv.dev and let me see, instead of getting my status, maybe I wanna get my followers XML. As soon as I go to load it in, look at this error right here. Rate limit exceeded. Clients may not make more than 150 requests per hour. So now, if I tried to load in my Twitter spitter off of Snorkel TV, this is what users would, would get an error for, that my rate limit has been exceeded. So in my Swift, I actually have something plugged in to expect this rate limit exceeded error and it will tell the user, all right, come back later. But so far, do you have a pen.com hasn't been giving me um, any of these rate limit exceeded errors, but you gotta watch out for it. It's a very real deal. Um, so um, that's it, folks. I uh, hope you enjoyed this series. I'm gonna write some stuff up so you can have it all in one little place of goodness. All right, hopefully you learned something and I really wanna encourage you to work with these services like Twitter, Flickr, and Yahoo because it's really cool what you can do when you marry them with Flash. But you have to be aware of all these issues when you're dealing with getting data and assets from different domains. All right, folks, catch you soon.